am Sensei Matt Federico, and we have dun, 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 coming in. She's coming in in a second. Hopefully, I admitted her into our chat. Yay, we're in. We have clinical psychologist Dr. Bissett. Can you hear me yet? Are we all set up? I can hear you. Yeah, I think I just Good. heard. You. All right, perfect. Um, so here we go. So I'm Sensei Matt Federico, and this is Dr. Bissett, uh, who is a clinical psychologist. So basically, um, I run a large community of people who do martial arts, and she has a, a community of people who follow her as well. And we just wanted to sit down and kind of tackle this issue together um, and give you guys a bunch of great tips on building really mental health against uh, COVID. So we're going to dive right into this. <laughs> so we've been talking a lot. So we got a lot of great things. We're going to give you a lot of discussions. Um, and just hopefully we're going to give you a lot of tools to kind of help you guys go through this. Um, so here, let me ask you my first question. All right. You're the expert. So sometimes uh, people feel like they just can't put a finger on the way they feel, you know? So especially going through this two months now, it's like you have your days where it's like, it's like, you have your days where you just can't understand, like nothing happened. I'm just, I'm just upset. I don't know what it is. I think sometimes people would call it like I'm in a rut. So I guess like the question is like, why does this happen? And is it just something deeper inside that's going on? Okay. Well, I think that's how the majority of people are feeling. And that's what I hear kind of all the time. And they're just trying to make sense of how they're feeling, but can't, you know, but the biggest thing is in what, I work with, you know, as a cognitive behavioral therapist, we focus on our thoughts. So what causes us, what causes our feelings, everyone kind of thinks it's the situation, right? So they would say, you know, COVID and, you know, being unemployed, but that's not it. It's our thoughts about the situation. And, you know, it's so important, you know, and many people that come into my office, you know, even just for the intake, they talk about, you know, that they just have these panic attacks or that they're so depressed and there's no reason and they don't know why. Um, but it, you know, there is a reason and it is your thoughts. And, you know, the biggest thing is just as we breathe, you know, all day long and we don't have to think about it or we're not mm -hmm. really aware of it. We think all day long and a lot of people are not aware of their thoughts. So it's important to kind of, when you are feeling that way, take some time and ask yourself, what am I thinking? And it's not an easy thing to do. It might not come to you right away, but, you know, keep practicing it. And, you know, you'll realize that it really is your thoughts that you've been thinking about. How can I like, can you hear me? I guess I, I like the idea, you know, Oh, I can hear you perfectly. I guess I, I love the idea of really, like you said, like, what am I saying to myself? Oh, it says my internet's unstable. That's not good. So basically I guess, I love your thought of what am I saying to myself? I guess the next question would be, how do I make sure that I actually like do that? Because I think sometimes the, the day just goes by. Is there like a tip or a trick that you can give us? Yeah. Well, I think, you know, during this time, it's also so important, you know, that we do kind of have a schedule and, you know, it might not be bad, you know, if it's maybe even after a meal to kind of just sit and ask yourself, like, what have I been thinking about this day? How am I feeling? You know, or if it's, even just at the time that maybe you are feel, like you're unsure of how you're feeling, just stop and give yourself a minute and, you know, and try to really ask yourself. I really also recommend, you know, getting a journal and being mm -hmm. able to just jot down whatever comes to your mind. You might not think like this is the thing that's causing it, but just start writing. Yeah. I, I think I, the big thing that I think you got across was, so you're saying that, all the things that are happening, we're basically thinking about all day and stressing about, and something really small could happen that will just set it off. So we kind of each day have to just kind of say to ourselves, like, what am I thinking? You know, what, what am I saying to myself? Like, I know I always say to my students, you know, I say, who's the most important person you talk to every day? And they're like, my mom, my dad, my girlfriend, whoever it is. And I'm always like, no, it's yourself. Um, so I like the fact of, I think the big point that you hit on is we have to find a time each day or leave out a post-it or have something there each day that says like, what am I saying to myself to make sure that we're not saying these negative thoughts to ourselves all day to put us in a rut or in a bad mood or whatever it is. You know, I think that that will be really helpful with our mental health. All right. That kind of leads me to my next one. Um, so my next question is like, a lot of people are not motivated. 
You know, they have no motivation to get out of bed, to work out, to do anything, to accomplish anything. You know, like they look at the clock, oh, it's, it's eight, I'll start at nine or 10 or 11 or one or two, and then the day's gone and they don't do anything. And I think at the end of that day, they're like, you know, they don't feel good because they didn't do anything, you know? And I feel mm -hmm. like to me, that's like a mental, like, oh, like, you know, there's nothing that happened that day, nothing changed that day. But now they're upset. And I think that to me, it's because they're not motivated. So is there any tips to kind of keep people motivated to accomplish things and, and end the day on a good note? Yes. You know, and this is a, a big topic I've been having with my clients because a lot of people are struggling with this. You know, a lot of people, it's that instant gratification. And in the moment, it feels so much better just to stay in bed and binge on Netflix, you know, and not being productive, you know, so but the biggest thing is, you know, not to just think of what, how it feels in the moment, but how it'll feel at the end of the day. So if you sit in bed all day and binge, you know, watching Netflix, how are you going to feel about yourself at the end of the day? You know, mm -hmm. um, or if you were to go and, you know, get some things done or exercise at the end of the day, how would you feel to kind of think of that? You know, but a great thing to kind of use is use your friends. You know, everyone needs to be like, use each other to hold each other accountable. You know, a lot of people, you know, are saying do um, like a workout challenge, like even to come up with your own workout for one day. And then you have to teach, you know, your Zoom partner, you know, and do the workout. And the next day, the other, you know, person has partner. to do it. Anyone who you wants know, a workout partner, I'm in. That, that's <laughs> great. I think that's even a good point of um, Zoom, like having someone that you see hold you a little bit more accountable. So I even like that idea of, um, I think the way to maybe stay more motivated for people, like you said, is to have other people to hold you accountable, maybe post on social media, Hey, I'm going to try this, or I'm going to do this. Or I like the, the zoom workout partner. That's a great idea. Cause I mean, think about it, that's a great way for someone to hold you accountable. And if you don't show up, they're going to be mad. So I, I like uh -huh. that a lot. Um, and something to just keep you motivated. I also find that motivating things keep me motivated. I'm like a big geek on like quotes. I love things like that. You know, they keep me motivated. Um, so I think that's, that's a really good tip. I think you have to find people and use people. I think uh, we were talking before this about how um, the world's coming so together on this because the whole world's in this together. So I think that's part of it is, you know, technically you have anyone in the world to choose from who can keep you motivated. So think about how crazy uh -huh. that is, you know, depending on your time zone. All right, this, yeah, this is great. Yeah. Um, all right, so I guess the next thing is, I get a lot of people who are stressed and worried about them kind of losing progress. You know, uh, primarily people's kids are like falling behind in school or a lot of pe athletes are upset that they're falling behind in their sport or, you know, everyone feels like they're falling behind. I even feel like some days I'm trying so hard to just do as much as I can and I'm just like, falling behind. I'm not making progress. I'm not doing as well. And then I get down to myself and I'm saying this to myself, which is worse because I'm saying it to myself all day. And I'm like, Oh, this is horrible. And uh, then I become unmotivated and I don't want to do anything. And, you know, I, I think it's almost like a cycle of this. So I guess, you know, is there a way that we can kind of like get back to feeling okay about it like what what should we do to get back you know like get back into like our groove yeah so i think the number one thing here is we all need to lower our expectations you know it's we're expected okay. to be you know work a full-time job at home you know but also be you know a full-time teacher when we're not even teachers and a full-time housekeeper and the list goes on you know, we can compare ourselves, you know, and expect ourselves to do what we were doing before. We have to, you know, this is a whole new norm, but we have to accept the whole new norm and, you know, lower our expectations and look at the big picture. You know, you might be getting frustrated because you weren't doing what you were doing before when you were holding all your classes, you know, but even something for myself, you know, I've been looking at it as it's not just about teaching my son, you know, all academics, right? We, he will learn it and he'll get there, but it's a time to teach him other things that I might not have had time for before, you know? 
getting him to do the laundry, doing yard work, you know, coming up with things that you won't, you know, that you might not have had time for before. I like this a lot. So you're not just saying just to lower expectations, but maybe just to lower some of them and shift them to others. So, oh man, it's in my internet connection is unstable. So I'm really hoping people got that. I'm going to say it again, just to make sure. Are you able to hear me, Danielle? Yes, I can hear you. Oh, oh I was worried. All right. So basically, um, what you said, and just to repeat this in case it didn't get across, is that we're not just lowering our expectations, but we're, we're also taking that lowering part and shifting them into something else. So we're not yeah. expecting them to maybe, you know, do as eight hours of schoolwork every day, but now we're going to, you know, shift it and do less schoolwork, but focus on other tasks that we're going to do. Like, I love that laundry idea. That's a great idea. We're teaching them more household things that we can do around the house or just things that we can help people with. I, I like that a lot. So maybe, I guess for myself, I should lessen my expectations of the projects I'm working on and, and maybe work on being better at something else. I like that a lot. That, that, that could be very helpful. Are you able to hear me? I'm not sure. Yes, I, I can hear you. Is it fuzzy? I hope not. Your pitch is a little fuzzy. Mm. Hopefully it's recording better than this. Um, okay, so I guess we, we answered that. Um, I guess let's get to, back to like one very simple question. Um, should we worry? That, that It's just a simple question. Like, you know, should we really worry about everything? Because I know for a fact people are worrying and have lots of fear and anxiety and panic. So I, just, should we worry? Like, that's the question, I guess. Yeah, well, it would be nice if I had to say, no, we shouldn't worry and everyone can, you know, be, be <laughs> happy. Go lucky. It, Rainbows. It's not, unfortunately, it's not that easy, you know. But there comes a thing, you know, these are very scary times. What is anxiety? It's kind of the fear of the unknown. We are living day to day with so much uncertainty that we've never been faced with before, you know, but we don't want it to ruin our days. We don't want, you know, to look back and just say over this, the months that I was quarantined, all I did was worry and panic, um, you know, mm. but kind of looking at it and, seeing what you can control and over those things, you know, kind of maybe come up with a plan, look at your finances, look at, you know, the changes that need to be made, you know, um, but definitely a helpful little tidbit that I've been, you know, working with my clients on is scheduled worry time. And okay. you know what that is because so many people, you know, even in the beginning, every day, you know, I was all the news, if it was on the TV or on, you know, my phone, social media, looking at the numbers and, I, and I driving myself. This is not oh. my age. Can you hear me? I hope you it's not my age. Oh, no. All right. So when you were talking about scheduling worry time, so basically I got to find a time to worry every day. Yes. But so what it is, you know, okay. and you don't want it to, can you hear me? Uh, sort of. Let's go with yes. I can hear you. But your mouth is like, like this and then okay. words still come out. But that's okay. Don't worry about it. Or if we do, we'll yeah. schedule time okay. for that. Okay, well. <laughs> <laughs> so basically what you know the scheduled worry time is is any you know if it's in the morning or maybe later on in the day you schedule a time uh, you know we've been in this for you know two months now so the scheduled worry time shouldn't be that long but let's say a half hour you sit down and you know with maybe oh. you know a pad and start the timer when that half hour goes off you're done worrying, you know, so it's that time you can look at the news or you can, you know, write your thoughts down that you're worrying about, but you don't want it to consume your day, you know, but I also, we can't mm. just say don't worry because, you know, it's our thoughts and we do need to process them, but have yeah. it for a set time so we can focus on other more productive things during the day. This might be, I, I mean, I love this idea of just scheduling time to worry. I, I sometimes feel like I worry about something while I'm trying to do something else and I'm never able to fully focus on it because I'm worried. So I like this idea of, of being like, all right, this is my time, I'm allowed to worry. A kind of a follow-up mm -hmm. question to that is, is there like an ideal time 
to schedule my worry time. Like I was thinking in the morning, but then I'm like, I don't know if I worry as much in the morning. Like I feel like midday, I kind of worry more because all these things start building up. But like, is there like a, a good time mm -hmm. to schedule your worry time? I think each person is different. You know, some people might wake up and they, you know, there's a lot of people wake up and they're already kind of like in a panic. And, you know, so maybe it's kind of taking that time to sit and process how you're going to get through the day and different things. Like for you, maybe it comes kind of, you know, midday, or maybe it just like little lingers throughout the day. And, you know, it maybe jot things down. And then at 7 p.m., you can focus it all on. So it really is kind of like a personal thing of when it's, you know, bothering you the most. And it can adjust, but it should only be, you know, for X amount of time, you know, each day. I think that's key, right? It, it, like, it's got to, we just got to keep it contained. So it's okay to worry. It's fine to worry. Everyone worries, but I mm -hmm. guess not letting it affect our quality of life is like the point. So like, you're allowed to worry, but you, you can't worry the whole day because if you do, it ruins your day. And then it also ruins the day of people around you. So I think that's a really great tip, great idea of just thing. Mm -hmm. So here, let's, I guess, recap, because here's, here's the things at least I got out of it. Um, the first thing was, what do I say to myself is the most important thing? What am I saying to myself the whole day? I think that's a big point that you made is we have to be aware of our thoughts, mm -hmm. right? That was the first thing we kind of hit on. Then we have to be accountable. We got to find people who are actually going to hold us accountable for a day so that we kind of have, I think we, we lost that, that accountability of going places, mm -hmm. you know? So I think I like that a lot. I like the Zoom workout partner. I'll still, anyone want to join me. I, I, that's, that's something I really want to add to my schedule and figure out. That's a really good one. Um, I like the shifting or, or lessening our expectations on one hand and shifting them to other things. So like if I'm worried, oh, I'm not being a good, you know, school teacher for my kid at home. Well, you know what, maybe I should spend more time teaching them how to garden or teach them things that maybe I wouldn't normally have time to do that maybe I am a good teacher at. You know, so I like that mm -hmm. shifting or even let's say you're a you know 19 year old kid and you're like oh I'm not doing anything all day or whatever you should lessen your expectations of what you're gonna do and just pick a few things like oh I'm gonna read or I'm gonna do this and just shift expectations I love that and lessen certain ones mm -hmm. and I, I love the no worries that Bob Marley song that uh -huh. we gotta schedule our worry time and and it's okay to worry but schedule it and, and kind of do that and I, I think these are all great tips for being mentally healthy. I think the big thing that people are missing about this is, you know, physical health is important, but mental health is really, really, really important because I think that's kind of the big thing that people are missing is this is affecting so many people's mental health, which is why I wanted to do this interview with you so bad is mm -hmm. I wanted to pick your brain. Like, why am I getting upset and what things can I do to stop this? And I feel like a lot of people are getting upset and don't understand why they're getting upset and i think you made so many good points is in reality we're our own worst enemy we're just saying things to ourselves that aren't isn't healthy and we got to put more things in place so i guess to finish up why don't we maybe go through an ideal schedule that would maybe help us kind of put all our things together do you know what i mean so like um i like the idea of you know what am i saying to myself maybe putting like a little index card of, out so that they may be on the fridge or you know on the breakfast table so every day they wake up and they look at them and they say what am i saying to myself you know somewhere somewhere mm -hmm. that they can kind of see it and make sure that they remind themselves that to say good things to themselves each day about everything i think that's a good one um what other things would you think they should schedule in their day to kind of help them you know, everyone's a little different, but a lot of people are trying to multitask and because you're home, you know, it's so easy to be in the middle of cleaning while also teaching while also doing your work. Yeah. So separating them, just as if you would go to the office for a certain time, kind of schedule it, have that place in your house, you know, even kind of set up kind of like a make-believe classroom of, you know, as normal, you know, as it could be. And that's where the kid goes kind of every time. Um, you know, so it's also the kid knows during this time they're doing their school work. So they're also not expecting mom to do something else. And, you know, 
So try not to really pay attention to what you're trying to multitask and try to break it down. It's, you know, this is the time we'll clean or this is the time we'll do schoolwork, lunch, just as we would have our normal schedule. Mm, I, I like that one thing. I'm actually reading a book and it's called The One Thing. And, and, and that's really great point is, so we break up our day, whatever is next, just do that and schedule it, whether it's schoolwork, whether it's working out, whether it's writing that book you've always wanted to write or organizing that closet, schedule it, boom. I like that. Um, scheduling their worry time, I like that a lot. Now, what about like, do you feel like they need to write this? Should they set a reminder in their phone? I sometimes find that when, we, when people get a task, they be like, oh, that's a great idea, and then never do it. You know, is there, like, should they do it in their phone? Like, how, how can we make sure that they schedule worry time? Yeah, I would definitely kind of schedule in the phone, you know, as much as, I'm not a big schedule person, but during this time, it is really important, you know? Mm -hmm. And if you have, you know, if you're trying to juggle, you know, a whole family, it's maybe even having a big, you know, kind of schedule on the, the fridge, or if everyone's kind of doing their own thing. But, you know, definitely scheduling in that specific worry time. If you're good at, you know, I kind of like the visual on the fridge and even checking things off. Um, a lot of people do like using their phone, too, with the reminders. Um, whatever works best for you. You know, you know something else. Oh, I'm sorry. Keep going. Keep going. I'll tell you after. Nope. Go ahead. I said I didn't know, but apparently Alexa can set reminders. And I just found that out today because my son was talking to Alexa a lot. You know, he always goes, Alexa, I love you. And then Alexa says, like, thank you. And like, shows him hearts. He goes, look, daddy, Alexa loves me. So oh. I didn't know, but Alexa can actually set reminders for you. So be careful what you okay, said, but so that might be a great idea. Alexa, like, Alexa, remind me to worry at eight o'clock or whatever it is. I, I like stuff like that. I, I also like the fact that, you know, what doesn't get scheduled doesn't get done. Like if, if you yep. don't schedule it, you don't get done. And listen, if you're not going to do anything, that's fine. But you, you have to lessen your expectations then for the day. You exactly. Know, not, and be okay with, okay, you know, I'm okay with how this day is going to go. And I'm okay with this being for this day. And that's what I'm happy with. I was pretty happy with my day. I got a lot done. We, we did 50 belt tests today. So we like got out a whole bunch of belts and I scheduled it you know, three hours of going to everyone's houses in my day. And I actually had a lot of help too. And you know, I had a birthday parade, so that was something else scheduled in my day. I didn't uh -huh. have a workout partner, so I'm going to have to schedule my workout sometime and then. But I, I think we hit a lot of great stuff. I mean, I'm, I'm really happy with this. I think we gave people a really good plan of here's the things that they should do. Is there any last tips that you want to give everyone? I think these tips are great. Yes. One more thing for that schedule. We need to, you know, a lot of things is, you know, the schoolwork or work and it's, our days are very stressful and we have a lot. We need to make sure that we are putting something in there for self-care. What is something that can, you know, relieve our stress a little bit? If it is working out, if it is, you know, playing something with the kids, something positive, you know, in your day, it's very important too during this difficult time. And I think if, if they can't, I mean, they have people they can reach out to. Like, I'm always trying to figure out different things to keep my students motivated. Like we did, like, the sparring belts was something I, you know, I think, like, made their day today. I think a uh -huh. good point reach out, ask your friends, hey, what's, what's some things you've been doing? What are some ideas? And I, I think that's a great point. You know, don't sit there and think that you're alone because you're not. Everyone here in the world is here to help you. So if you need help, reach out, ask. You know, it's okay to feel this way. Like, everyone is feeling like this helpless feeling. So it's okay to feel like this, but you know, find a way to, to kind of dig deep and check what you're saying to yourself and schedule your worry time and shift your expectations. And, you know, and I think if we, you know, and have that zoom workout partner, I think if we do all those mm -hmm. things, you know, I feel like we'll all be in a better place. Especially yes. Mentally. Yes. And that is very important. Awesome. Well, listen, thank you so much for your time. This was, this was a pleasure. I think we, I think this is going to be great. I think people are really going to appreciate this. And I appreciate you taking the time to do it. It was awesome. Yes, this was great. Thank you. I was hoping my internet didn't cut out. All right. All right. Thank you. I'll speak to you soon. Right. Have a great day. Bye. You too. Bye-bye.